Before we get started, be sure that you're watching this video in HD. To change your video settings, just click on the small gear in the bottom right hand corner of this video. This video will show you step by step how to make moist apple cider cupcakes with fresh apples folded right into the batter, a homemade caramel sauce, and a salted caramel buttercream frosting. Whenever I'm baking, I like to gather up all of my ingredients before I start doing any mixing. This way, everything's already measured out, which makes things much easier to follow along with a recipe, but it also ensures that I'm going to have every ingredient that I'm going to need. For this recipe, your butter, apple cider, and eggs will all need to be at room temperature. I'll put a link below to my blog, which will have a printable version of this recipe, and I'll also give you the amounts as we go along in this video. You're going to preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit and line 18 cups in muffin pans with paper liners. Let's get started with our dry ingredients. In a large bowl, you're going to combine 1 and 2 thirds cup of all-purpose flour, 2 teaspoons of baking powder, 1 half teaspoon of coarse kosher salt, 1 tablespoon of ground cinnamon, and one teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg. Once you have them all in the bowl, just grab a whisk and start mixing them until they're all incorporated, and then you can set your dry ingredients off to the side. Now we're gonna start working with our wet ingredients in the bowl of a stand mixer fit with a paddle attachment. You're going to combine 2 thirds of a cup brown sugar with one stick of unsalted softened butter. Start your mixer on a low speed until the butter starts to break down a little bit, and then you can kick it up towards a medium speed. The key to getting a fluffy, light, and springy cupcake at the end of this whole process is right here in this step. So while it may seem to all be incorporated after just a minute or so, it's really important to beat for three to four minutes so that it changes from this pasty, dark brown color into a light brown color with a fluffy consistency. Once you've reached that consistency, you're ready to start adding your two large eggs. You're gonna to wanna to do this one at a time. And I always like to crack my egg into a separate dish first before adding it to my mixing bowl, just in case it's a bad egg. You don't wanna ruin what you already have working. So you're gonna add your first egg and you're gonna to continue to beat until it's fully incorporated. And then you're gonna add in your second egg and keep beating that until it's all mixed together. Now we're going to start adding in the dry ingredients so you can knock the speed on the mixer down to low so they don't go flying everywhere once in the bowl. It's important at this step not to over mix your batter or you'll end up with tough, dense cupcakes. So we're going to alternate between adding the dry ingredients mix that we made before and the apple cider. Start by adding one third of the dry ingredients mix followed by half of the apple cider. Once that's mixed together, you can add in the second third of the dry ingredients followed by the last half of the apple cider. Allow that to mix together and then add the last third of the dry ingredients in, letting it mix until just incorporated. Don't worry if there's a little bit left over, we'll get to it in the next step and it's better to under mix than over mix your batter at this point. Add in one large diced apple and use a spatula to fold these in by hand, which will also get any clumps of the dry ingredients that we might have missed before. Take your batter and the muffin pans that you filled with paper liners earlier and fill each one two thirds of the way full. These will cook in the 325 degree oven for 20 to 22 minutes. And you can tell if they're done cooking by inserting a toothpick into the middle and pulling it out. If it comes out clean, you're good to go. Let the cupcakes cool in the muffin pans on wire racks for a few minutes and then take them out of the pans and allow them to cool completely on the wire racks. While those are cooling, you can get started on your caramel, which will fill the inside of your cupcakes and be drizzled over the top of the frosting. If you've been too intimidated to try making your own caramel before, or you just didn't know how, don't worry because it's a lot easier than you might think. It may take a couple of times before you get the hang of it, but after that you'll wonder how you ever ate anything but homemade before. As important as it was earlier to gather up all of our ingredients before we started baking, it's even more important now. There's a lot of ingredients that need to go into the caramel quickly at the end, so make sure that everything's measured out and within your reach before you start cooking. Set a medium saucepan over medium high heat, 
and add one cup of granulated sugar, two tablespoons of water, and two tablespoons of light corn syrup. Use a rubber spatula to stir these to combine, and then continue cooking, stirring occasionally until the sugar dissolves. You can see here that when you run a spatula through the mixture, you can still see some granules of the sugar. You know it's dissolved when those disappear. Once the sugar is dissolved and the mixture slowly starts to come to a boil, you can stir it one more time with the spatula and then set it off to the side because at this point we'll be swirling the pan to stir it. You can see here all of the granules of sugar have been dissolved and you can begin cooking your mixture. This process has a lot of variables depending on what type of pan you have, what kind of stove top you're using, and just the overall temperature that time of year. So while there's no exact time frame for this part of the process, here's what we're looking to do. We want to take the sugar and cook it until it turns to a dark amber color. We're not stirring with a spatula at this point because it's so hot, so we're swirling the pan instead to stir the mixture. You want to do this in a controlled way so that the sugar doesn't slosh up the side of the pan and leave sugar crystals that can mess up the caramel. To prevent any crystals from forming where it does get on the side of the pan, we're just going to keep a small dish of water and a pastry brush on hand to brush down the side of the pan every time after we swirl it. Like I said before, this step in the process never takes the same amount of time. It always differs, but in this particular case, it took 8 minutes from my last stir of the spatula until it reached the desired color. Even when you remove this from the heat, the sugar is so hot that the caramel is going to continue cooking, so you have to get it off right at the point where it starts to turn from an amber color to a slightly dark amber color because it will keep cooking after that and you don't want to overcook your caramel. Once it's cooked to the desired color, which is what we're looking at right here, you're going to add in the rest of your ingredients. This will bubble up, so be very careful at this step. Add in four tablespoons of room temperature unsalted butter, one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, one tablespoon of coarse kosher salt, and one half cup of room temperature heavy cream. Take a whisk and carefully stir this rapidly until everything is incorporated and the caramel is completely smooth. I like to pour mine right into a separate bowl just to stop it from cooking anymore in the pan. I let this rest at room temperature, stirring every once in a while until it's cool to the touch, and then I transfer the caramel to a 6 ounce plastic candy melts bottle. You'll have a lot left over, so use it on ice cream, apples, anything that you like. To fill your cupcakes, you're going to need to hollow out a small hole in the center of each one. You can do this with a small paring knife, or you can use a cupcake core. To use this, just press it into the center of the cupcake, twist, remove, and then pop out the core. Mine is from Williams Sonoma, but you can find them all over online. Once you've cored all of the cupcakes, you can then use your bottle of caramel and squeeze some into the center of each one. You're going to take the core that we popped out earlier and cut it in half to leave enough room for the caramel, and then you're going to use it to plug the hole. Continue this process until all of the cupcakes are filled. Now we're in the home stretch and are ready to start making our salted caramel buttercream frosting. In your stand mixer fit with a paddle attachment, combine one half stick of unsalted butter that's at room temperature with a quarter of a cup of solid vegetable shortening. Cream these together on a medium speed until well incorporated. Turn the mixer down to a low speed and then begin slowly adding 4 cups of sifted confectioner's sugar a very little bit at a time. This will eventually become very thick and dry, which is what we want before we add in the caramel to start loosening everything up. Once you've added in all 4 cups of your confectioner's sugar, pour in what's left in your caramel bottle, reserving just a couple tablespoons worth to drizzle over the cupcakes at the end. Beat this on a medium-high speed until light and fluffy. You want the consistency here to be thick enough that it holds its shape while being piped, but not too thick that you can't squeeze it out, which mine clearly was here. So to fix this, we're just going to stop the mixer, scrape down the sides of the bowl, and start beating again, adding one tablespoon of milk at a time until it's smooth enough to reach the right consistency. If it had been too thin after we added our caramel, we would just add more confectioner's sugar until it reached the right consistency. If you don't want to pipe on your frosting, you can stop here, use a knife, and just spread it on like that, but I think that piping it on gives it a nicely finished look. 
You're going to fit a large piping bag with a 1M size tip and fill it with your frosting. I find it easiest when I'm by myself to put the piping bag inside of a drinking glass and roll the excess top over it instead of trying to hold it in one hand and handle the frosting in the other. This way, the glass is holding it for me. Once your bag is full, remove it from the glass, making sure that your tip is still in the bottom of the bag. Twist the top of it to move the frosting down and remove any excess air that's in the bag. To begin piping on your frosting, start in the center of your cake and begin squeezing the bag with a constant light pressure. Continue swirling around the outside of the top of the cupcake and then work your way back towards the center, pressing down a bit before lifting your tip away from the frosting. Take a little bit of the caramel that we reserved earlier and drizzle it over the frosting on each cupcake. If you want to add a garnish to these cupcakes, dried apple chips are super simple to make and they look fantastic. I'll share the recipe for those on my website which will be linked to below. Once you've drizzled each one with caramel and garnished them, you're finished. Store the cupcakes in the refrigerator until about an hour before serving.